So now that I have the floating debris cut out mostly, I want to place it a little bit more exactly. You'll notice that the angle of the viewer on the floating debris is a little bit higher up than the angle on the swamp, right? And I want to set this into the swamp. So I could just try moving it down, right? And kind of setting it on the water. And that works, but then I lose a little bit of the focal points I wanted, right? That that red can was a big reason I wanted this composition. And I need water to be behind it for that to fit in. It wouldn't be a very good composition if that's all cut off completely. So what if I transform it, Command T, and I shrink it a little bit. And what if I use my right click and actually play with perspective? And I just tilt the perspective down on both sides a little bit. And kind of set it back. See, so now it's the can's in there and it's sitting on the water a little bit better. But because these are man-made objects, I can't distort them too much without it being obvious. All right. So let's see. That versus that. Well, in terms of my landscape, this works better, and I have some other things to add in. Now, this is also just too strong a focal point, and it's right at the base of my tree, which I don't love. So let me see. If I shift it over a little bit, maybe like so, I like that. And now, how can I affect this being such a strong focal point? I can use what's called dodging and burning. So this is like using levels and darkening and lightening, highlights and shadows. But instead of doing it to the whole layer like we've been doing, it will do it with a tool. So that tool is here. It looks like a black lollipop. And that's the dodge tool. The dodge tool brightens. So if I use that, it will brighten it up, which is the opposite of what I want. It makes it too strong. But I might want a little bit of that on the red eject can. And then the burn tool is what I want. It, it deepens and darkens. And I want the range, when I use dodge and burn, I always want to affect the midtones. And I want the exposure to be 30 or less with a soft edged brush. That way I can kind of darken this down, kind of put it in the shadow of the tree a little bit. Make those dents a little bit more extreme underneath. And make it not such a, an eyesore in terms of um, how bright it is. And there's other little areas I can hit as well that I think are standing out too much. And this is a way I can kind of blend in some of this ground. <coughs> now this tool does take a lot of processing. And it can go slowly. Now notice my file now is over one gigabyte large. So over a thousand megabytes. And at this point, I have everything I'm wanting to use. I don't need so much desk space anymore. So I'm going to use the crop tool. I'm not going to crop exactly to my image, but I'll crop closer to it. And that's going to save a lot of memory and processing. So you just draw the crop tool around what you want, and it cuts off all your reference, everything that's been pixelated, rasterized. It cuts it off. The other thing I can do at this point because I'm sure I don't need it anymore, is I can delete my smart layers. Because that's uh, keeping a lot of internal memory going. Because when we're doing large print-ready files, large resolution to print at 11 by 14 or larger, we often need to conserve memory in order for it to, to run more efficiently. And when we're doing things like dodging and burning and changing pixels on the fly, that's important. I also have way too many programs open, <laughs> and you shouldn't. I need preview open for my sketch, but I don't need my, my browsers open.
and I don't need my music open anymore. Excuse me. <coughs> now, while that's converting, if I go to my browser, I'm going to find what's called a texture fill, which is going to be a finishing technique to help blend this all together. Help soften some of those those hard edges that that make it obvious where one reference ends and another begins. Come on, computer, work with me here. And this is why we save so that when everything gets stuck, even my recording got stuck a little bit. Um, we won't lose the progress we've made. All right, so while that's saving, I'm gonna to go to Google Image Search and I'm gonna look for a, a misty fog texture fill. Cause that really fits for a swamp at dusk. Now what is a texture fill? A texture fill is, is like a filter in Instagram if you want everything to look a certain way, dusty or grimy or, or foggy. The nice thing is that designers are very generous. And so if I look for a texture fill that's larger than, let's say, six megapixels, because I, I need it soft, oh, I'm going to find examples like this. Or even like that. That are just perfect for what I'm after. So I'm going to open those just like I would a regular reference. Yeah, that's okay. I like the kind of lens blur there. But if we just do a straightforward one like this. I can actually drag and drop that right onto the very top of my image. And then transform it, spread it across the entirety. Like so. And it's made to be a texture fill, because that's what we search for, which means if we change its mode to overlay, oh, I need to speed Photoshop up here, or better yet, pin light or soft light, these are some of the favorites I have, it's going to help adjust everything and kind of glaze over everything, make it all fit the right uh, environment. So we're going to use those texture fills um, in various ways to finish this off. Right now I'll keep them turned off. Okay, another way I can get rid of memory is all of these smart layers I don't need anymore. And I can delete them. And that takes it under a gig very nicely. All right now, let's get back to compositing. So now that I'm in the foreground, before I even, uh, well, I guess I should always soften edges first. So 100% opacity, soft edged eraser, pretty large. Let's get rid of these hard edges. And then where it's easy, use the magic wand. with contiguous 
to cut edges out. But be careful of where they cut out too much. And hit delete. Or maybe I do actually want to get rid of a lot of this. I like what's behind it. <laughs> and then use your eraser. Do more by hand. Tools aren't doing what you want. Make sure you're on the right layer. There we go. Looking better. Look at that date stamp. Ah, terrible. If you ever want a really clean cut, just use your lasso to preserve a hard edge, and then hit delete. Okay, now I want to go to image adjustments, levels, zoom out a little bit, deepen the midtones, limit the highlights, but not as much as before because this is more in the foreground. I want it to stay. It's a bit of a focal point. But it's got way too much yellow in it. So then adjustments, color balance, push away from the yellows and the midtones. Away from the reds a little bit. And the shadows, let's make it a little bit bluer. A little bit redder. I often squint to do this. And then the highlights, let's see what happens if I take more yellow out. Push more cyan, no. Often I have to push it back and forth and kind of see which one works better. All right. And sometimes I go back to levels. And I do my final pass. So levels and color balance, by far my favorites. I could even go to hue saturation and play with either taking saturation down, which helps a little bit actually, or moving it up, which I don't think helps. I'll take the saturation down a little bit. And I can even change the whole spectrum of it to something else. But except for tiny moves, that's not generally a good idea. All right, so pretty big changes there, right? From where I started, levels, color balance, levels, and then hue saturation. Now, eraser. Soft edge, big, but lower opacity. I'll blend in that water, but I want to keep some of those reflections in there. A lot of them, in fact. And I can play with its placement. I can crop it a little differently. I can transform it to, I think I like it about right there. And now I'm going to teach you another tool, which I want you to use sparingly. But what if I want these kind of water effects, these ripples in here, to help break this up a little bit? I'm going to use what's called the clone stamp. Clone stamp is right under the brush tool, but we're still using other people's pixels. Clone stamp's a little complicated. So